Uh, thanks very much, John. Um, as an outside observer, I also see the good work that MeWatch does and works with schools. Um, yes, so my name is Bern Murphy. I work in uh, teacher education at Melbourne. And so for the past nine years now, I've been coming up with, um, in a partnership with the Yukala School and the Yukala Homeland Schools, and we um, collectively offer PRAC students, or what we call pre-service teachers, um, an opportunity to have a placement in one of their schools. So in a way, the partnership is uh, partly about teacher recruitment. And so it's been going for over nine years and it, over nine years it's continued um, to evolve and it will continue to evolve, we hope. So the partnership might be about schools, but it's really a partnership with people. So I'd like to acknowledge the school leaders of the Yukala School, Meriki, Katrina and Yelme, and the Homeland School, Haiti and Munchanga, who is the cultural advisor. And also all of the other teachers, both Yungo and Napagi, who work in the schools, because all of them contribute um, in some way. In particular, I would like to acknowledge Lombinga from Gatalala, a homeland. Lombinga was going to do this um, with me today, but she was here all day yesterday and, and can't be here, so I am going to use some of Lombinga's words um, and be guided by her. So for those of you who, who were here yesterday early in the education forum, Lombinga and many of the other Jungle teachers made it really clear that they want better funding and training for Jungle teachers and some form of their rate program back. And actually, I probably couldn't agree more. Um, and so for those of you who are not from around here, I thought I'd um, just give a snapshot of what the two schools are, so that you have a sense of what the partnership looks like with students. So firstly, the Ocala School, which is kind of just down the road here, is a P to 12 school. It also has a FAFT program, the Family as First Teachers, um, and bilingual, and they accommodate students in all of those programs to offer experience of what it looks like and, and what it's like to work. The teachers are really generous with their time um, and their expertise. A homeland school, on the other hand, um, is a school in a homeland, which on that red dirt road, if you keep going, the homelands all seem to um, go off that road at some stage. The homeland op school operates from Monday to Friday, but on a, from a Monday to a Thursday, the um, teachers, the visit, what they call the visiting teachers, who tend to be the Napigi teachers, go out on a Monday afternoon, they either drive or they fly. Um, from a Monday to a Thursday, they're out at the school and they uh, stay in the training centre based in the middle of the homeland. And the, they work in conjunction with the homeland centre teacher um, and often what they call a young paddler, who is a young person who lives in the community who helps out. They're kind of like a teacher in training themselves um, at the school. So when I was thinking about what might be useful to share um, about the things that I've learned, um, I want to talk about some of the examples from Lombinga and from the homeland of Gatalala. So often the discourse around remote education is framed around what schools haven't got and what they can't do as a result of their remoteness. And as Lombinga points out to the students, um, that for for the people, families in Gatalala and everybody up here, Remelbourne is remote for them. So she kind of gets them to flip what, how they're thinking and instead focus on what can be achieved and what they have got and what they do do with limited resources often. And at Gatalala, it's not uncommon for the families and teachers to all get a troopie after the official school day um, to go hunting which might be fishing or mud muscling, and sometimes you cook it on the beach and eat it that night, that evening, with the families all together. Lombinger will, will explain that this is not about a recreational activity for fun, even though for the PRAC students it's, it is a lot of fun. She will explain that it's about showing, it, showing students what the 
kids' lives alike so that they better understand when they're teaching them in the classroom. And in this context, it's also flipped because the kids become the teachers and the pre-service teachers become the learners. And it's really powerful. In fact, one day I was on the beach with... Um, Lombing has a young son called Cyril, who's about nine, I think. And Cyril told me that he's going to be a teacher when he um, finished the school. And I said, why do you want to do that, Cyril? And he said, um, so I can help my mum out so that she won't be so tired. So it's also not uncommon, what I see when I'm there, in the evening, so that the teachers who stay in the training centre will be having the meal, and after the meal, uh, Lombinger might come over and people sit on the veranda and have a cup of tea, and they'll start doing planning for the next day and shared learning, and um, the pre-service teachers are involved in that, and they get to see, you know, how it works, because schooling and education doesn't isn't confined to nine to three. It sort of happens all of the time when they're there. Uh, and on the Friday when the homeland, the homeland centre teacher takes over, when the visiting teacher will go back to the home, homeland centre in Yerukala and all of the teachers work collectively um, together. And I can't tell you, it, you know, schools without school kids in them, it's, you know, great places. However, the, it's a really busy day and a really um, hard working uh, group of people. So if I come back to that notion of partnerships, I kind of think, how do we keep a partnership going under the existing inequitable funding conditions that these schools um, are operating in? And that's a question we have to constantly ask ourselves and that I can talk to about our colleagues in how we do that. So we do try to give back as much as we get, but really for any school to agree to take on a student teacher, it's always something extra. Um, to an already busy time. So my role is to, is to help support that um, process. Um, but to me, the partnership is not about what we think that we can offer. It's about what the schools and the people think and believe works best for them. So it is. it does need to be collaborative. It's like we can offer this and we can do various things, but um, how does it work together and how does it work for you and what works best for you. And so when I say it's evolved over um, the, all those years, I think back to the early days and you know, um, think, oh, I wish I hadn't done it that way. And so we learn something new every way, every year. But we, what we definitely come to realise now is that working closely with the schools is the, is the answer. The answer to Jungle education is definitely Jungle teachers working in conjunction with um, Napigi teachers. And in both schools, you see a really beautiful example of that. Uh, what I'd like to, just like to finish on is, so there are some, uh, there have been many graduate teachers from Melbourne as well as other um, places who continue to do amazing work up here. Uh, there are two currently out in homelands now and we had some, um, teachers up there this year and so one of the graduates who came last year and is teaching this year was a mentor in his first year to another student. But another, t so often people say to them that, you know, it's really great what you do up here, um, you're doing good work and it's good of you to come up here and work here. And for them they say to me, it's, it's not really about that for them. They, um, well, one, they get a job out of it so they definitely get something back out of it. But it's also... Um, they feel really privileged to be here and they feel that um, they want to make a commitment to staying because of the people that they work with. So I think what we learn from that is partnerships is about relationships, so you need to, to sustain the relationship and that's um, later on this tomorrow night, I think we're getting together to talk about how we continue to do that. So I think um, I'm under my 10 minutes, so I think I might finish there um, and pass it back to Sean. So thank you very much.